Well, good morning again, fellow Flat Belly Travelers and Coffee Chat friends, and anybody else out there who might want to listen to this. We had another Coffee Chat discussion a few nights ago, and just a second, and it was uh, it was productive. I thought it was it was kind of a surprise to me how there was less participation than I would have thought involved in it. Um, well, maybe I maybe I, I shouldn't have been surprised, but it was I didn't know what to expect. I thought it was a valuable thing to talk about, and obviously some did. I think we had ten people out at the event, but there was a lot of interesting reaction to it. I was that was that I was really surprised. Like there were people. There was one guy there who told me he said he heard from at least one person the reason they didn't come is because of the topic, which once again was surprising to me. Because justice, I thought, is that was the topic for the night. Right, by the way, <laughs> before I get too far into it, justice was the topic for the night, and I thought that justice, you know, thinking in terms of the meaning of the word, I thought it's an important thing for us, you know, to be just in our affairs and so on, and to be to be treated justly. I thought that was pretty important, but going around the room, I got a sense for where it is that people are coming from. There was, for example, there was a mention of tarot cards. I wasn't sure exactly how tarot cards related to justice, but I think it's seeing consequences, perhaps. And there was mention of fairness, there was mention of control, there was mention of paramilitary aggression. And, but there was a lot of, I don't even know, I'd like to use the word hang up, but a lot of attachment to the, to the idea of justice being to do to do with the justice system in, in governments and so on and that and therefore a lot of a lack of trust of that in some way and the idea of consequences and punishment being attached largely to the idea of justice and the justice system but I think it was a productive talk because that wasn't the approach that I took to it complete uh, completely although I see the connection but that's what people, a lot of people seem to see when you say the word justice is the justice system. And perhaps that's what some people run the impression of which I, what I was going to talk about. But as you know, in these coffee chat sessions, it's all about taking a different topic for the night or a different idea and looking at ourselves from a different angle and how can we empower ourselves to have a better quality of life experience. That's, that's the thrust of it. It's all about the same thing using different words to help ourselves to keep reminding ourselves of this potential we have within us to grow in any direction that we would want. So what I had to share, I'll share it here and if you got any comments you know feel free to chime in either in email or whatever you want to me at any time and um, so here we go anyways. I, the, the, the title of this little presentation that I'll give here and I'll read most of it is justice and how is it related to the improvement in the quality of our life experiences. As you know in some words and especially I think it was important in this one because of the the idea of the idea of this almost. It was almost as though the impression in some was that justice, the idea of justice is actually injustice within a syst within what's seen as the system. It's almost like you know the word flammable it used to be inflammable it's as though the word justice used to be injustice and the in got dropped just like inflammable it dropped the in and now it's just flammable so so flammable means inflammable I don't know that was just a play on words but it seemed almost like that so if we look at the look at the definition of the word though even a common definition look it up in a dictionary essentially what it means is the quality of being fair and reasonable that sounds a little bit better, doesn't it? Fair and reasonable. If we're fair and reasonable to people, people are generally going to be fair and reasonable to us. That We've talked about that over and over again. We put out, we get back. And in the origin of the word, if we look at it, it comes from, I don't even bother mentioning too much, you know, Old English, French, Latin, all that. It comes through all of that, which means justus, which means law or right. And if we look at those two words, if we look at 
if you look a little bit, little bit deeper into the word law, we see that it comes through Germanic mostly, meaning in Latin, laid down or fixed, or to lay. And if we look, and if we look at the the word lay, it means comes through the Greek and Latin and so on. It means bed. It's like imagine bedrock. When we want to build something really tall, like a tall building, we go down to bedrock because that's solid. We can count on it. We can count on it being there consistently. That's what law originally meant. And right comes through all those Indo-European languages, mostly Euro European languages, which means rectus or rule. And rule meaning straight. Straight. So Matt, think of think in terms of bedrock and straight. And the suffix ICE added to a word like just makes it into a word that makes it into makes makes the word just, for example, into or just the justice means then having the characteristics of being just. That's all that is. So the, the, the IC is not too important then. So having a look at the definitions and the origins of just and the words associated with it, we can see that it has to do with being fair and reasonable. We can also see that the concept in its origin has is about being fixed and straight or constant without variance. It plays no favorites, in other words, in our lives. And though in our world there appears to be this ever ongoing flux of change and variety, it seems like there's one thing, if we look at it, there's, there's, there, there's, there's aspects behind it all which remain constant. And this we could say is law or the justice behind it. So let's examine this to get a, you know, because sometimes when these things start out, they're rather, there's a lot involved in in the preamble to, a, to, a, to, to looking at an idea like this. So let's look at it. And from here on in, you know, my, my interpretation of what justice is in a way that we can look at it in our lives, how it, what, it, what it means to us in terms of the way we live our lives, and therefore affect our lives in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an improving way. So as I see it anyways, justice has, or law, has kind of like three main aspects, or it comes in different forms. I see at least three, but they're all related. They're actually all the same, but they appear to be to have different flavors. And the one I would call, the three of them are, the first one I would call natural justice, the second one I would call inherent justice, and the third one I would call contract or agreed to, contracted or agreed to justice. And what these are is, okay, first of all, natural justice. I would call this as justice or law applying to those things which we as individual human beings don't appear to have control over. In other words, what we think of as our outside world, outside the realm of our control. And, and examples of this would be gravity, the weather, time, things like this. These natural attributes of our so-called outside world, as we can see, they play no favorites at all. No matter who we are or what we think we are, it appears as though if we jump, if we're standing up in a row, jumping off a building, a bunch of us, we're all probably going to hit the ground. It's not as though some are going to be suspended in the air, some are going to bounce off the ground and back up again. We're all going to land very similarly. We're all treated equally in that case. That's natural justice. Inherent justice is really, as I see it, another form of natural justice, of course. But it appears as though it's more 
near and dear to us because the ramifications we see that we have an effect on or we have an we we can see our part in it more clearly for example if i decide to drive my car in a reckless manner consistently that's my decision to drive my car in a reckless manner consistently against my better judgment <laughs> sooner or later odds are I'm going to have to face the justice of consequences. And those could be anything from damaging my car, injuring myself, injuring other people's property, injuring other people, and so on. That would be an example of inherent justice. Or, another one would be if I'm in a relationship, or you're in a relationship, and you make a decision to treat others favorably, then sooner or later, the justice of these qualities that you're giving out lead you to an improved quality of relationship. Same goes for the health of our lives, the finances of our lives, our peace of mind, and so on. Do you see that? The difference between... But they're an equaling out in some way. Something's going on, there's justice inherent in it, and just that the, in the inherent justice, inherent within us, that's sort of like... The first one was so-called our outside world, we're not in control of so much. The next one is what's within us. And the third one is, I call it contracted or agreed justice. And this has to do with, once again, there was three, right? The outside, the inside, and then there's the interaction with others, which is also kind of an outside, but we're involved in it. And this justice only comes into play when we agree to it. In other words, unlike the justice of gravity, or the injustice, or the justice, rather, I don't want to use injustice, the justice inherent because um, in, inherent in, 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 in the way we behave, whether we're conscious of it or not, unlike those two, a greater contract justice only comes into play when we make an agreement with other people, or even ourselves for that matter, but that would be more like an inherent, that it be so. And I'll just go on a little bit more to, to give an example for it here. If, if you and I agree that I'm going to buy your car, this would be an example of a, of a temporary uh, pact being set up, and there could be justice as the consequences of that. So in one moment, there, was, there wasn't this situation, and in this moment, because you and I decided, there is this situation. So it's not ongoing. It, it's, it's one moment no, and it's one minute another. That's why I'm saying it's, it's like a, it's, we made a contract or a pact. We've decided. We agree on a price that when I pay you a certain amount, the car becomes mine. If you agree to accept a check, then when I write the check to the amount that we agreed upon, give the check to you, the car becomes mine, the check or the money becomes yours. Now, if you misrepresented the car, and you told me everything was perfect, and it turns out the car won't even start, the, car, the, the, the engine is seized, the en everything's about it mechanically is garbage. Or on my part, if that check bounces, and you don't get your money, it would nullify the contract, and therefore there, it's, it's like there would be an injustice that had taken place in there. Because there was no fair and reasonable exchange of value. Going back to the original meaning, there's no fair and reasonable exchange of value that was agreed or contracted upon. Do you see the difference there with the different types? They all are related, but appear to be different. As we can see then, in order for there to be justice in our contracts and agreements, there must be honesty throughout the whole activity and it must they must be entered into freely and voluntarily by all participants involved. 
In summary then, I would say that there is at least three forms of justice. Natural justice, which appears to deal with all of those things which we don't seem to have control over. Inherent justice. And by the way, natural justice, we're best to accept it. There's, there's no sense crying that it's raining or, or complaining that the wind is howling outside. So what? We just work with it. That's probably what we're best to do. Inherent justice, we're also best to accept it. Because it, because it appears as though we can take advantage of it. What I mean by that is, if we find ourselves in circumstances that we don't, we prefer not to be in, we can realize that, there was, that there's inherent justice in it, which had to do with our part in the equation. And when we realize this, we can see that by the same law or the same justice inherent in those circumstances, we can also improve our lot and our quality of life within those within new circumstances. In contract or agreed justice, we can see that there is a law of accountability in how we interact with others. By entering into agreements which are whether formally or in, or or implied or formally or implied in the spirit of what is fair and reasonable. We experience, we experience justice fair, favorable to all involved. Justice, then, is especially in, in, in a complete nutshell here, justice, we can recognize, is like a natural phenomena. Phenomenon, perhaps it is. I'm not very good with my Latin here. <laughs> Like in the natural aspect of it, things like gravity, the weather, time, we appear to have no control over, and therefore we're best to accept them and work with them, like I said before. I'm kind of repeating myself here a little bit, but... And with the inherent justice, when we recognize that there are results according to our actions and thoughts, on an ongoing basis, always, which we, are, we directly or otherwise affect. It behooves us to be heedful of our thoughts and our actions that we put forth, that they are constructive in building circumstances favorable to the quality of our life, life experiences. And finally, in our contracts and agreements, there is always justice in how we treat others. All of what we do in terms of our interactions with others have to do with agreements of one form or another. If I say to you, hey you, you might take it in a certain way. If I say hey, and I use your name, then you might respond favorably. If I say hey you, you blocking, blocking, blocking you, you know, you would react in another way again. If only for a second there is some sort of an agreement, it's either favorable or, un or unfavorable, with a reaction between, between two people. But there is an agreement to a greater or lesser extent. And the more honest we are with this fairness and reasonability in our agreements, we have as though a law or a justice of reverse action coming back to us in the form of fairness and reasonableness. When we examine this, we recognize it all improves or diminishes the quality of our life in the moment. More, we give more love in our relationship agreements. We get more love in our relationship agreements. We can get more certainty in our lives. We can have more trust from others, and so on. Justice, I would say then, is what is kind of behind what is running our life circumstances. And I would say that it is through 
justice of how we live our lives, that we experience all qualities of improvement. What do you think? Does this sound like an interesting topic? Or does it sound a little bit of a topic to be afraid of? You be the judge. Thank you for listening, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye for now.